Physicists at CERN just discovered a brand new particle. Researchers from the Large Hadron Collider Beauty Experiment, referred to as the LHCB from CERN, discovered a never-before-seen particle which has since been named the tetraquark, or TCC+. The EPSHEP, otherwise known as the European Physical Society Conference on High Energy Physics, have stated that this particle is composed of two quarks and two antiquarks, and referred to it as an exotic hadron. A quark is, in summary, the foundation of what matter is made of. These quarks can fuse together to form hadrons. The process is like that of neutrons and protons in the modern theory of atoms. What the EPSHEP meant by calling the tetraquark exotic was that the matter of TCC plus lives longer than any other such particle in existence before it. Furthermore, no other particles are known to contain two quarks and two antiquarks in quite the same way. Within recent memory, there have been several similar discoveries of exotic hadrons, most of these possessing up to five quarks at a time. But the TCC plus stands out even among the strangest of particles. This is because quarks have weights, and the tetraquark has heavy quarks and light antiquarks. The antiquarks in question are also different kinds, with one being an up antiquark and the other being a down antiquark. As a direct result, the decay process of the TCC plus becomes vastly complicated to the degree where it takes an incredibly long amount of time to decay. Inside the world of quantum physics, the discovery of the tetraquark brings with it unbound potential for the future. There is a chance of there being even more particles, like the TCC plus out there, waiting to be found, all of which could increase our understanding of this vast, unknown cosmos which we deem our home. Further studies on this particle are set to be conducted soon, with CERN physicists undoubtedly excited to conduct deeper research into this matter as it might reveal much about quantum physics that was previously unknown. Aliens may have observed civilizations emerge on Earth. Earth is perfectly positioned so that at least 1,715 nearby star systems are in view. It stands to reason that if there has been any extraterrestrial life on just one of those systems, they may have witnessed the birth of early human civilizations. These nearby star systems make up the Earth Transit Zone, or ETZ for short, and with over 300 new stars entering the ETZ within the next 5,000 years, the possibilities for alien contact only seem to increase. Not too long ago, the European Space Agency began a new mission to explore this possibility. The agency successfully launched the Gaia mission, which aims to create a 3D map of our galaxy. Gaia has discovered something truly incredible. The agency found that 75 of the closest stars in the ETZ have been touched by our radio signals. Since humans began transmitting radio signals about 100 years ago, the study found that our radio waves would have washed over them already. According to Lisa Kultenegger, the director of the Carl Sagan Institute at Cornell University. Kaltenegger claims that these selected 75 stars are of the most interesting subset of stars for uncovering extraterrestrial intelligence. The possibility for contact with aliens has always seemed to be a sort of fantasy, but it is becoming more of an attainable goal. If extraterrestrial life does exist among these nearby star systems, it is possible that they could view Earth and even detect our life on the planet. Earth's most telling signs of life are given in the form of atmospheric oxygen and methane. Due to the necessity for oxygen and methane to react to form carbon dioxide and water, the two gases would need to be produced in large quantities for life to be possible. The only sound explanation for atmospheric oxygen and methane is the presence of life, according to Kaltenegger. Astronomers are always on the hunt for these telltale signs of life on faraway exoplanets. These gases can be spotted by monitoring the stars that each planet orbits. When a planet passes between the star and our viewpoint, the star's light dims. The extent to which it dims gives us a great deal of information. By analyzing the features of the star as it dims, it will determine the chemical composition of the passing planet's atmosphere. In December 2020, the Gaia mission discovered some breaking news. 
A report was finalized which contained a complete accounting for the movements of all ETZ stars through time. For the first time, we could take the movement of everything around us into account, Koltenegger said. What Guy gives you is the movement of the star over a couple of years. It has been found that within a constrained time frame, the movement of stars can be intricately predicted. Unless they encounter a gravitational anomaly like a black hole, she said. So with the new Gaia data, Koltenegger and her team could rewind the movement of nearby stars to essentially peer back in time. This allowed them to check where the stars were located 5,000 years ago and whether they provided a view of Earth at that time. They used the same method to look 5,000 years into the future. This allows astronomers to understand what stars have truly been within reach of us and which ones may have felt our radio waves. With this new information, we can begin upgrading our search for extraterrestrial life. Neanderthal diet was carnivorous, shows study of tooth. Neanderthals are an extinct species that lived in Eurasia nearly 40,000 years ago. They are considered to be archaic humans, which means they have some similar traits and body composition to modern-day people. Scientists can typically determine the diet of an animal or human by extracting proteins and looking at the nitrogen isotopes in bone collagen. However, the issue with this technique is that it cannot be used on bones older than 50,000 years old due to their fragility and risk of deterioration. As a result, researchers have struggled to determine the diet of Neanderthals. Their location and region will also provide some insight into what they may have eaten. For example, some of the studies conducted on the dental tartar in the Iberian Peninsula concluded that they preferred a plant-based diet. At the same time, in other areas, it was strictly meat. For one, the Neanderthals in Spain at the Gabasa site were carnivals. A researcher named Clevia Joayan helped to develop the idea of using zinc isotope ratios in a tooth's enamel to figure out what it regularly ate. Zinc isotope ratios are highly durable and can withstand degradation, so they will not be damaged during the extraction and analyzation period. She used this technique to get more information on what the diet of these Neanderthals might have been. To be clear, if the proportions of zinc isotopes in the bones were lower, the animal or human was likely to be a carnivore. In contrast, if the proportions were smaller, the human or animal likely had a plant-based diet. With this in mind, this technique is still highly debated, and many skeptics are still determining if analyzing zinc isotope ratios is enough to assess the diets of the subject accurately. Nonetheless, this new process of analyzing Neanderthal teeth has made waves across the scientific community. Could a large tsunami happen in the United States? The answer is a resounding yes, because the United States is located along the Pacific Rim. It's prone to tsunamis caused by earthquakes in the Pacific region. The most tsunami-vulnerable areas in the US are Hawaii, Alaska, Washington, Oregon, and California. While there is no way to accurately predict the time of when it's going to happen, if it's going to happen in our lifetime, it's safe to assume that yes, it will happen again sometime in the future. When looking into the possibility of the next big tsunami hitting the US, there are three primary sources of information that can be used. One is the tsunami catalogues that store significant historic events. Second is by studying the geologic deposits left by mega-earthquakes and landslides in different parts of the world. Finally, we can also look at the data from computer simulations that create scenarios of potential big earthquakes and landslides worldwide. Most people have never witnessed a tsunami, and this is a fortunate fact. If you want to have an idea of how powerful a tsunami can be and how it can affect the US, put it this way. Waves that are formed by the wind only travel through the top layer of the ocean, and we have seen how violent these waves can be. On the other hand, tsunamis or waves that are formed by an earthquake or some other strong force like a celestial body hitting the earth have an extreme amount of force, much more than wind waves, because it moves through the entire water column starting from the ocean floor up to the surface. To estimate the potential damage of a mega tsunami hitting the US, we first need to know which area we are going to focus on. 
As mentioned earlier, it's more likely for a tsunami to occur in the west coast than in the east coast. However, let us picture the possible scenarios for both coasts. If the east coast gets hit, it will cause huge destruction in Miami and New York, since these are the major cities. As for Washington, fortunately it's protected by Delaware. However, another threat to look out for is the overflow of the nearby rivers caused by the sudden inflow of seawater. If the mega tsunami hits the west coast, the country's technological progress is likely to be hit since Silicon Valley is located in California. The city of Los Angeles will also suffer a huge amount of devastation as it is along the Pacific coast and the city has a dense population. Regardless of which part the tsunami hits, there will certainly be a significant number who lose their lives. Damage to both private and public property and infrastructures and not to mention it will slow down any aspect of progress there is in society and government. If the US gets hit by a tsunami, it's likely that Japan and other countries in the Pacific will also be hit. History teaches us that natural disasters can be so destructive that everything can be gone in the snap of a finger. Ring of Fire Activity Sparks Earthquake Fears there are some places on our planet that are, unfortunately, more prone to disaster than others. Perhaps the most dangerous of all these places has earned itself the nickname the Ring of Fire, as a result of its renowned reputation. This is a path along the Pacific Ocean that is particularly prone to natural disasters. Along this so-called Ring of Fire is a host of active volcanoes, and the alignment of the tectonic plates means that this ring sees the majority of the earthquakes on Earth too. In 2018, researchers began to pick up on a number of earthquakes affecting areas nearby to this geological terror zone, namely Japan, Guam, and Taiwan. However, research conducted in California, which has also seen its fair share of natural disasters, suggests that there may be aftershocks that continue to affect the area, due to the tremors seemingly coming in multiples. What is even more concerning is the belief that this smaller seismic activity has the capability to be building to something significantly larger. This Californian study took a sample of 101 major earthquakes recorded in the area surrounding the Pacific Ring of Fire over a 26-year period, from 1990 to 2016. The research was published in the scientific journal Science Advances and provided some insight in the impact of aftershock activity following earthquakes. Earthquakes are most often caused when tectonic plates meet one another. The movement becomes too great and then the excess energy is released as a shockwave, in turn causing the earthquake. We have long been acting upon the assumption, despite there being statistical inconsistencies when we have looked at relevant seismic data, that an area in that has recently seen a slip in the tectonic plates is more likely to experience a second slip soon after meaning multiple earthquakes are somewhat likely to occur in the same area, within a reasonable amount of time to one another. The reality seems to be a little more complex. As opposed to the residual stress on the fault line, the fracture along which the initial slip first occurred, the ongoing impact is on the surrounding areas, which, with each nearby earthquake, are being pushed increasingly closer to failure themselves. This is what results in aftershocks, adjacent ruptures, and the clustered nature in which earthquakes tend to occur. This pattern has been observed in Taiwan, Guam, and Japan. Whilst they are far from one another in relation to static stress interactions, the seismic shaking has had an ongoing impact, eventually reaching each of these impacted areas. Prior to this analysis, a lot of our understanding, even the elements of which were deemed to be correct, were highly speculative. The ongoing research seems to suggest that the most likely predictor for the location of the next earthquake is the surrounding area, because of the initial shock. We are yet to develop a technology that can inform us how big this will be. So while we can be weary, we are yet to know if this may be an indicator of a significant threat or a slight continuation. It's very much ongoing research. The technology that is being developed here has the potential to save lives, giving much greater evacuation time in the event of disasters. Man discovers mysterious large face on Canada cliffside. 
Sometimes the answers to mysteries seem to be right in front of us. For over two years, Hank Gus, of an Aboriginal group called the Sheshat First Nation, had been searching for a face that he heard existed on a cliffside on Reeks Island. When he finally discovered that he and Parks Canada First Nations program manager Matthew Payne shared the news with an archaeologist they work with in the area. Describing the face, Payne stated, We went out to see it recently, and it's remarkable. It really is a face staring back at you. The Seshat have lived in the area for thousands of years, and one goal is to find out if the face goes along with any oral histories the Sheshat have. Another question archaeologists would like to answer is if the face is man-made or a natural creation. A barrier to discovering more about the face, which is believed to be about seven feet tall, is that the cliff where it resides is very dangerous. The island has a rocky shoreline with lots of hidden rocks, and it can be dangerous depending on sea conditions, commented Payne. You need to know what you're doing to go and look at it. Despite these barriers, the Seshat First Nation and Parks Canada are eager to look at the face close up. Whether or not the face is man-made or created by Mother Nature, it's reported to be quite striking. The fact that it has been witnessed by so few to date is rather incredible and shows how new discoveries can pop up just about anywhere. Huge Chimpanzee Population Thriving in Remote Congo Forest The Congo Forest is known as one of the most treacherous places on Earth. Despite the dangers lurking in this colossal forest, the local chimpanzee populace is seemingly flourishing with life. The Congo forests border the Central African Republic. Legends of old claimed the existence of colossal apes that howled at the full moon and devoured lions and predators, but these were believed to be merely myths. After a team of researchers wandered through the forest's unlisted lands, they discovered what is thought to be a chimp megaculture, possibly the last of its kind, with a huge population of chimps. German primatologist Cleve Hicks states, this is one of the few places left on Earth with a huge continuous population of chimps. We estimate many thousands of individuals, perhaps tens of thousands. This would make the chimp populace the largest in Africa. Because the land was uncharted, we have insight into how chimps and apes act in completely natural environments removed from any prior human interruption. The chimps in the Biliuli forest are larger than most other chimps, meaning the legends have seeds of truth in them and they have, in fact, been spotted devouring leopards. In the colonies of the forest, male chimps patrol the area while mothers teach their young to utilize tools and eat insects, and there is a definite order and way of living for these chimpanzees. The cameras the researchers placed around the forest showed that aside from the chimps, there are olive baboons, hyenas, and forest elephants all residing in the area, and so much more wildlife. According to Hicks, we saw incredible amounts of wildlife on our camera traps, but we did not catch a single film of a human. It remains one of the last untouched wildernesses in Africa. The Billy chimpanzees were first found in 2008, but the research did not occur until recently with the published study in the Journal of Biological Conservation. As it stands, in Africa, humans alone have destroyed chimpanzee habitats so badly that in just the past century, their population has gone from millions to several hundred thousand, which emphasizes the importance of this discovery. However, researcher John Hart claims the area is at great risk of being opened up, and explains that the Lord's Resistance Army are trying to move through the part of the forest, and brigands from the area are trying to create conflict bases in the Congo forest that will endanger the animals. Scientists and researchers worry about hunters seeking to invade this previous unfounded section of the Biliuli to hunt the chimps and elephants to trade in the Congo Basin. Around 440 chimps are eradicated annually for trade. Hart says, with the availability of bushmeat declining elsewhere, commercial bushmeat hunters are going further and further into the forest. DRC law protects chimpanzees due to their endangered status. However, the law is only applicable if hunters get caught. Officials can be bribed, and according to Hicks, that is often the case, since the local militia benefit at times from these huntings. Hicks believes the military is even giving weapons to the poachers. 
The chimp megaculture is helpless to poachers should they decide to invade the area and hunt the animals with no proper or solid protection. Elephants, especially, have already been severe victims of poaching and they, along with chimps, cannot stand to suffer an even larger population loss. Hart desires for there to be a unit of wildlife guards who circle the forest and protect the animals inside in order to stop the hunters. According to Hart, it is a very significant opportunity to preserve a whole ecosystem of chimpanzees. Elsewhere on this continent, this opportunity just does not exist. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.